Have you told your friends that you see ghosts? Oh, absolutely not. Gina Rodriguez returns in Not Dead Yet. I'm back, baby. Who is that? Oh, she's the obituary writer. And Brad Garrett joins the brilliant ensemble cast. Titan, Maverick, Titan of all Mavericks. These are all words used to describe me. Baby, I got you shook. Got you shook. Not Dead Yet. Season premiere tonight, 8 30, 7 30 Central on ABC and stream on Hulu. It's the Happy Families Podcast. It's the podcast for the time poor parent who just wants answers now. More times than not, our kids are actually going to tell us the things that make Christmas special. It's not the gifts, it's everything else that's around it. And now here's the stars of our show my mum and dad. With only 54 days left until Christmas, gift giving is just around the corner, but the cost of living crisis is still very much front of mind with a lot of parents feeling the pinch. Inflation is at, I don't know if it's record levels, but it feels like that. If you've got your kids in the car while you listen to this podcast, we're going to talk about some of the financial aspects of dealing with costs around Christmas. That means that this might be a slightly sensitive conversation for some families, and you might want to consider whether the kids are going to join you in this discussion, this conversation with us, but that's where we're going today. Well, I don't keep up with all of your interviews. So usually somebody tells me they saw you on TV. I didn't even know you had an interview this week. Today's show, we talked about this topic (laughs) and I just thought, oh gosh, they're on it. This is a topic that's worth discovering again. But this is a conversation that we have regularly in our house. Yeah. Last year. How many kids? (laughs) Have you lost lost count? Oh man. (laughs) Last year, I had this really, really good plan. I thought it was a great plan. You're about to throw me under the bus. I can feel it. I I know where this is going already. We lost our beautiful, beautiful puppy dog a couple of years ago. Yeah. And the kids had been wanting one and it took us a little while to come around to it. But I decided that last Christmas was the perfect time to get a puppy. Yeah. And I thought I had it all stitched up. One present, the whole family done, dusted. A dog is kind of pricey. Pretty big deal. Yeah, we bought bought this beautiful little cheeky dog that I regret buying called Ruby, who is a, uh, what do you call it, a King, King Charles, Charles Cavalier. Cavalier. Yep. And, uh, she should be a show pony. She was supposed to be the gift. and then, She was. And then what happened? And then what happened, two days before Christmas, I just got- somebody <laughs> in the household decided that we just – didn't feel like Christmas without the gifts under the tree. I got this urge. Now, I hate shopping. I mean, shopping centres are the worst, but I got this urge and next thing you know, I was down at Sunshine Plaza. Spending, you were down at Sunshine Plaza? Spending up a storm. Spending up a storm. I think I was. Because I wanted the credit. I, want the kid, I wanted the kids to open a gift from dad. It just feels so Is good. that what it's all about? <laughs> yes. I've been trying to work it out. The last few years, you brought gifts for the kids and now I know why. I just love giving them something that I know what's in the wrapping. <laughs> You could just come shopping with me. I hate shopping, especially with you. You take so long. (laughs) Anyway, we need to talk about how we're supposed to have these conversations with the kids. I think the first thing we really want to look at is for so many families, Christmas feels magical. Yeah. Especially our young kids. Santa comes, he knows exactly what they want, and they find it under the tree the next morning, miraculously, magically, it's all there. But for lots of families, we're really starting to feel a pinch financially. So the question is, when do we become realistic with the kids about what Christmas looks like? So I think the real question here needs to actually be, what does the magic of Christmas mean? What does it encapsulate and what doesn't it include? Well, clearly in our house, it's the dad bought us a present. If we, I'll ignore that, <laughs> if we want to make it all about materialism dad, and fulfilling our children's every wish, then we probably need to be realistic with ourselves. And this year, I'm not going to be doing that. Oh. You have my word. Are we buying another puppy dog? No, we're not buying another dog, <laughs> but there's been like 14, 15 interest rate hikes and I'm not buying presents the way that I did last year. It's just not going to happen. But I get where you're coming from. There are going to potentially be some children who are disappointed. It usually won't be the little kids. Their aspirations, their dreams of gifts are usually somewhat more tempered. As kids get older, their opportunities to be expansive in their gift lists increase and that's when we start to experience those, those problems. So what age would you suggest that we actually tackle the conversation of Christmas budgets with our kids? What have you noticed about the kids? Like when do they start noticing money talk? By the time they're seven, eight, nine-ish. That's where I was going to go as well. So one of the things that kids get 
really hung up on is whether or not their parents have got enough money and whether they're going to be okay. Like mm-hmm. some kids are really attuned to this. We've got a couple in our house and they'll actually tell us they don't want anything because yeah. they're so... And when we dig under the surface, it's always about money. Mm-hmm. And it's like, hang on, no, 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 this is, this is a cool thing. We're fine with this. Don't worry about the money on this one. But if we're too explicit with the kids about money conversations, they start running everything through that money filter. They don't think that they're going to be okay. And I guess... What I'm saying is younger kids won't be that sensitive to that. They won't have a clue what it is. But once you get north of six, kids really do know what money is. And by seven, eight, nine, ten, they start to be a little bit more restrained because they, they understand what financial pressure looks like and how it makes it, their, their parents feel. So I think we need to emphasize this need for a careful conversation. I think there are going to be some families listening thinking, my kid's not attuned to anything. They just want <laughs> yeah, right. the latest iPad, the latest <laughs> Nintendo game, whatever. So, how do you how do you deal with those challenges? So, again, what's the magic of Christmas? Like the magic of Christmas for a child is very much about getting the surprise under the tree, but it's also about all the other things. So, now is the time, fifty four days out, to say, "Hey, guys, this Christmas." We need to have a conversation about gifts. Let's get the lists together. But don't just give me a list. Here's how we're going to do it this year. So over the years, we've done things like a homemade Christmas. When I was a uni student and we had nothing, we decided to do a homemade Christmas. And it was one of the most memorable and delightful Christmases ever because of all the work that went into putting those gifts together. Uh, There's that little phrase that has been going around the internet for years. Uh, What is it? you, You need to give them something they want and something they need and something to wear and something to read. Thank you for finishing that. I always get it muddled up. And when the kids know that they're going to get those four things, you get to have conversations about values. What is something that you want? What is something that you need? What's the difference between a want and a need? And and let's give you something that's practical as well. I mean, once upon a time, when I was a kid growing up, you kind of got all the essentials. You got your socks and jocks, even as a kid, with one exciting gift and maybe a book. That, that concept, I don't think that there's anything the matter with moving away from an overly indulgent materialistic mindset and saying, we're just going to pull it right back even doing that though, we've got six kids and when you do something they want and something they need and something to wear and something to read, that can be astronomical. So even that can be a lot. I remember reading a post a handful of years ago. Um, it was a letter to parents and just the acknowledgement that if Santa is attributed to all of the expensive things that we get for our children, there are plenty of children who are not as fortunate to have a Santa in their home who's able to gift them that kind of gift and the impact that that has on those children and their sense of well-being and mattering. So that that same post, I remember that. And at the end of it, it said, so any substantial gifts, make sure they don't come from Santa. Make sure they come from the parents or the caregivers so that there's an understanding in the playground. There's an understanding when kids are saying, what did Santa bring you? That Santa brings some tokenistic kind of gifts, but it's my parents because they're the ones with the means. Otherwise, Santa looks like... He's picking and choosing who he's going to gift, who he's going to bless. Yeah, the wealthy kids get all the good stuff, basically. And I really love that. In terms of having the conversation, though, I want to go back to the three E's of effective discipline. I think that this is a three E's conversation. So when we're talking about how the Christmas list might look, we sit down with the kids and we explore their desires and we explain how Christmas is going to work this year in our home and we empower them to develop a list based on the principles or the framework or the structure that we've given them and we have lots of empathy when it doesn't feel fair. So I wasn't on the TV show with you on Monday, but I think I would actually be having a really different conversation with my kids. Yeah, tell me. I would actually sit down with them and ask them what are the things that they love about Christmas. I'd want to know what things stand out to them. And I can tell you right now, not one of them will tell me that it was a a specific gift that they got. It will be spending time with family. It'll be the fact that they get to have um, the special dessert that only comes out at Christmas time. It'll be seeing Nan and Pop. Like more times than not, our kids are actually going to tell us the things that make Christmas special. It's not the gifts. It's everything else that's around it. And by having that conversation with them, That's the magic of Christmas and therefore we can then lead into the gift giving and talk about how maybe this year we might actually change 
the way our gift giving goes. Yeah, so gifts can still be a part of Christmas, but that's not what it's really all about. For those with a religious basis as well, then that conversation leads beautifully into uh, the, the, the religious values associated with Christmas. I think there's a couple of other things to highlight here. If you've got older kids, what I might also encourage is giving them in fantasy what they can't have in reality. I've talked about that a thousand times on the podcast, so I won't go into it here. You can do a quick search and find that very phrase and you'll find what I'm talking about. Just saying, oh, don't you just wish, wouldn't it be amazing if but that's not what we're doing this Christmas. Like, yes, I know that you are 16 and on your L's and you would like a new car and the Ferrari looks good, <laughs> but, but we don't buy kids' cars. You, you're going to have to save up for it, which leads into a maybe not a Christmas conversation, but an important conversation about encouraging entrepreneurship, getting kids involved in earning their own money, developing their own businesses, finding ways that they can add value to the lives of other people who will then transfer money into their bank accounts so that they can have those very expensive things that they want that don't fall under our Christmas remit. But the reality is sometimes as parents, we still kind of beat ourselves up, right? We want to give yeah. our kids the world. That's we, why we I went to... shopping last year. <laughs> I was beating myself up. I don't know what's under the tree in those things. So how do we lower or ease up the parental guilt that we feel when we want to be able to gift our kids things that we just are not in a position to give them? Here's my cheesy line for the day. Kids don't need presents nearly as much as they need your presence. It's pretty cheesy. It is pretty cheesy, isn't it? <laughs> but, but I think that, I mean, you sort of said this before, that's at the heart of the most magical Christmas and I, experiences. I really believe that. Like, I think about the times we've been away from our home for Christmas. Yeah. And one year we were actually overseas. Like, this was a really big deal. It was the first time we'd ever left the country. And we went Christmas, <laughs> we, we were gone on Christmas Day. And the kids were sad because they wanted to be at home. Yeah. It was that simple. And... And so I think that that conversation is really, really powerful. If we can tap into the things that make Christmas so special, then it actually helps to put things in perspective for everybody, including mum and dad. Yeah, and, and be kind to yourself. Like inflation is not your fault and the cost of petrol at $2.00. 20 a litre or $2.30 a litre or whatever, that's not your fault. And interest rates and rental increases are not your fault. So if things are expensive and if the budget is tight, it's not your fault. I don't think that we can beat ourselves up for that. It's outside of our control. Let's work on what is within our control. Hope that there's been a helpful conversation. The Happy Families Podcast is produced by Justin Rulon for Bridge Media with Craig Bruce as our executive producer. If you want more info about making your family happier, please visit us at happyfamilies.com.au. Mm-hmm.